Okay, so we need the ingredients for the positive electrode. And we've gone for uh, one gram is one percent. We're going to make a hundred grams. Manganese and graphite powder, sixty-three grams. And we're getting it all over everything here. Sixty-three. Okay, and we've got a nice lid for this. Uh, it's best to clean all this stuff up. Well, I hadn't realized how all pervasive this stuff is. You can probably see that it's all over the counter here, just from the dust that came off that when when we poured it in. So, and to weigh it. So uh, I'm I'm doing everything outside now. So next, I'm also doing a double batch. So uh, 29 grams of nickel hydroxide times two, which I'll also do outside. I should have a fume hood here. So yeah, this, all these nano powders, apparently they uh, float into the air. I've, uh, I've turned on at least the exhaust fan in the laundry room and uh, I'm going to wear gloves and I'm going to pour this uh, fluffy 58 grams of uh, nickel hydroxide into the jar with the manganese compound. Now we want about 5 grams times 2, 10 grams of uh, conductive carbon black. This is from Barite World or you can use uh, graphite from an art supply store. Once again we have these uh, absolutely totally fine nickel powders and this is very fluffy. This is the fluffiest stuff. So that big uh, tablespoon, heaping tablespoon was three grams. Eight grams. If I did this outside I think the wind might just go into my bucket and blow it all away. And nine grams. Nine point nine grams. Should about do it. Ten. Okay, and once again we'll go outside and pour this into the jar with the other things. Okay, right with this and mix pour it in the jar. Now I'll just wipe off the counter here. Let me wipe up these black powders. You'd swear that it's creating more streaks than there was material to make the streaks, but that's how fine they are. At the moment, it's all sealed up. Needs to be thoroughly mixed. I filled it with water and stirred it all up. I had a terrible time with the lumps from the uh, old dry cell. Filled it with water and added bleach, and uh, that's to get the reactions happening to more oxidized levels and. Uh, and intended to uh, dilute out any impurities and I poured off this much water and added more distilled water so far. Uh, I also spooned out this uh, ashtray full of uh, powder and I'm going to grind that up now into uh, powder again and it should be very fine powder that I grind it into. So I'll pour this <coughs> water off again. It's been sitting overnight, so it should be uh, pretty much water. Even though it still looks completely black, I can see it's clear where it's coming out.
thin and slurry now. There's uh, still some water on top. But it's, the powders are starting to come out, so I'll stop there. And just set that here and resume later. Some of it spilled this time. <coughs> Mostly this using the stick when you pour it keeps keeps it coming down the stick instead of just running down the side of the jar so now we gotta take this and put it into the mortar I dried this out on top of the wood stove <laughs> clumped up like a patch of soil that's been there's been no rain crap coming nicely into powder yeah that's pretty nice okay so we've got a we've got it back to a fine powder it's got the uh, good there's manganese oxide with the nickel oxide and uh, a bit of graphite to make it more conductive and a bit of uh, samarium oxide to raise the oxygen over voltage so it's less prone to bubbling oxygen. There's one more processing step for the positive electrode and that is you take the powder which uh, I'm now a ways beyond when I did the last footage I didn't show it but I poured in plenty of acetone and stirred it up and it became a creamy powder with no lumps whatsoever immediately the lumps all vanished and uh, what I believe is happening is that uh, the various crystals the uh, atomic the structure is is dissolving and forming epitaxial crystals that means that the substances are mixed together inside the crystals so that uh, they're kind of combined at a more molecular level and that uh, makes a tremendous difference to how well the the electrode performs so basically I'd say don't even try without uh, without uh, immersing it in acetone and mixing it to a creamy powder first and then uh, of course you set it somewhere warm or on a on a hot plate and uh, it dissolve uh, evaporate out the acetone and a uh, note of safety uh, acetone methyl methyl ketone if you get it in your eyes it'll blind you so wear safety glasses. Uh, you're likely to slop it when you're stirring it. Now thinking about the order in which these things would be done, I would think the first thing to do would be to uh, further oxidize the manganese oxide with bleach to make it its maximum oxidation. Then mix the powders together then dilute them out with water to get out any impurities and then uh, put the acetone uh, uh, stir them up with acetone to a cream and dissolve out the acetone and after that they should be ready for the battery cell i think when i first started trying to make batteries i bought a big five gallon pail of uh, nickel hydroxide the fluffy green stuff and I'm saying well why start with that you can uh, heat it up to over 300 degrees Celsius like up to 500 and turn it into nickel oxide a black powder and it's more dense and lower molecular weight and uh, it might work out better in the acetone and, and give more and it'll turn into back into nickel hydroxide when it hits the electrolyte anyway in the battery cell and I'm asking myself why I didn't start with just uh, 
a bag of nickel oxide from a pottery supply store.